So we're working on getting our first cutting of hay mowed down and the conditioner broke. We got a McDon 4000 mower conditioner, pulling it with the 1206. And what happened was, let me go to the other side, I can show you. It's got two rollers that kind of crimp the hay as it comes out the back. And it got a wad stuck in there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Maybe we can see it from the back. See, it's got a wad stuck in there. And this thing must not have a shear bolt anywhere. You would think it would, but what happened was the PTO shaft coming off the tractor hooks onto here with a keyway and a set screw and it broke the keyway out of there. So hardware store was closed when it broke. So dad was going there this morning and get the parts. Once we get that fixed, we can finish getting our hay mowed. This mower conditioner has been really good for us. Uh, we didn't know anything about Mechdon when we bought it. It was at a local equipment auction and it was relatively cheap and we needed it. So we bought it. It's been really good for us. It's not a disc bind. It is a sickle mower. It's got a sickle down there with the reel. So you can't go real fast with it, but it does the job. We don't have a whole lot of hay, so I mean, it's it's good enough for what we use it for. Oh, that ain't good. No wonder. That's why. I think it'll get by for today. I need that bolt. See if I can get it started. Call Gibson City and get them to order one. Because really all we need is this end. If they can get us this end and a new U-joint. Right? Yeah. Just change the joint. Change the... Is that an 18? Or... So the yoke part was cracked right above where the uh, keyway goes. So that's probably why it keeps breaking there. And we don't really know where we can get parts for it. We've never really had to get a whole lot of parts for this thing. So we're going to put it back together and see if we can get by, try and find some parts later, I guess. Well, we got it back together. Dad's going to back up in the field and we can see if we can get that wad out of there. I'm going to have to hold the pipe and a pipe wrench on it to raise the one drum up so we can get it out without snapping that again. It's already weak, so... Otherwise, we might just try and shove it through, so. So this hay was seeded last year, so this will be the first full crop season we got off of it. Uh, it's a grass and alfalfa mix. It was seeded with oats as a nurse crop last year, and we cut the oats off of it with a combine. We used a really cool old gleaner combine. I'll post a card to it right here if you want to check that out. And then we got one cutting after that. It wasn't real great hay. It had the uh, oat stubble in it yet. but. I think we got like three bales off of it. We're gonna have a lot more than three bales. This hay is thick. That's kind of why dad was having trouble with that thing. He said he's been having to go really, really slow with it. Hay's tall, it's thick. We would have liked to have got it cut maybe a week or two ago, but it was kind of raining then and we didn't really get a good chance to do it. So the tractor we're using is my grandpa's IH 1206. It's a 1966 model. It's my personal favorite tractor ever. I love that tractor. We take it to Rantoul and plow with it. Um, it looks like he's having some trouble. So I don't know how well that PTO fix is going to hold up. But I guess we'll find out. Um, we're really hoping to get this the rest of this hay cut. We have one more field that's only a couple acres. There's about four acres here. We want to get it cut because there's a nice stretch of dry weather coming. I'm not really sure what's going on. 
kind of stopped. He must have got another wad stuck in there. There's also some rocks out here, so hopefully we don't have any trouble with those. thinking it's a little too damp yet this morning. Well, he tried to cut this yesterday afternoon after it was good and dry. The rest of our hay is pretty much just grass, but this has the alfalfa in it, so it stays a little damper and it's thicker. So he's having trouble cutting it. Uh, we might have to go cut that other field first and come back to this after it's dried down some, but not a big deal. Field. It's a couple days later. Dad ended up getting the rest of the hay cut. I was busy doing some other things, getting some corn sprayed and stuff. So he's out here raking it. He pretty much takes care of the hay. That's kind of his thing. So I didn't really do much, but he's out here raking it. I kind of wanted to get video of the process from start to finish, cutting, raking, baling. We got another guy coming out to bale today. I'm gonna sell this hay to him. Uh, the reason why I planted this hay is just it's a little field. We need a little bit for our two goats, but this is way too much for them, so he's gonna buy the rest. Dad has enough hay for his cows on his own property, so he doesn't need the hay. Anyways, we're gonna get some shots of this 1206 raking. It's way more tractor than we need, but it works, so. Some really nice hay. Uh, like I said earlier, this is a grass and alfalfa mix. Uh, it's Pro Harvest Seeds. If you want to buy some, I'm a dealer. My email's in the description. Anyways, it's really nice hay. It didn't get rained on. Had really nice drying weather. Um, it got pretty hot today and yesterday, but just really good drying weather. So it, it, it's going to be really, really nice hay. So.
So usually second cutting is a little bit better quality. It's not so stemmy. Um, this hay got really tall before we were able to cut it, but I mean, it's, it's still gonna make good hay. So normally we will do some square bales off our second cutting just because it's a little bit nicer. So we really don't need a whole lot for the goats, maybe like 20 bales or something. So the rest of this is gonna get round baled and sold to Kevin. He's gonna feed it to his cows. Rake is an international. I really don't know anything about it. I don't know the model. It was, we kind of inherited it and it still works. So I really don't know much about it. It's a good rake. It does a nice job. Haven't really had to do much to it. Like I said, we got way more tractor than we need up front, but it's available. It works. So the reason why we rake the hay, there's multiple reasons. So sometimes if you don't have optimal drying conditions, if you got like heavy dew or there's just not much of a wind, you'll need to actually tip the windrow over so you can dry the bottom side of it. That's not the case today. The reason why we are raking it now is we're just combining three windrows into one. So the baler doesn't have to make so many passes through the field. Um, that big round baler can handle a pretty big windrow. Otherwise there'd be a windrow every 15 feet we're combining those and then you pretty much got a windrow every 30 feet or whatever, I guess. I guess that's what it would be. So that's what we gotta do. Less passes with the baler, he can get done quicker. And it just kind of speeds things up. It does, I mean, it does help dry. If there's anything on the bottom of the windrow that's still got any moisture in it, it's gonna get some sun, get some wind, and that's why we rake. So that's pretty much it as far as raking the hay. I'm gonna pause this here and pick it back up when Kevin gets here to bale. We'll get some video of that. Um, he's got a 4440 John Deere and a, I think it's a 568 John Deere round baler. So it won't take him long, he'll be done. Well, Kevin just got here, just started baling. I'm gonna give the goats a little bit of this hay before it's all gone. They really like it. They're not gonna get any till the next cutting. We have some hay for them already, but. They really like this nice fresh stuff. So I did a video uh, when I hit 10,000 subscribers. We were, actually Kevin was chopping silage and this 4440 was on the bagger. So you might have seen this tractor already if you've uh, been following me for a while, but he's got 4440, 568 John Deere baler. Pretty nice setup. I'm gonna go follow him around and get some video real quick. some pretty big bales. I'm right at six feet tall, so they're, they're at least five footers.
All right, we are done baling. We got 16 bales out of this four acres plus that little guy. So about, uh, I don't know, maybe a tenth of a bale there. But pretty nice hay. Um, like I said, I'm going to sell it to Kevin. He seemed like he thought it was pretty good hay. So it should be a good feed for his cattle. This is actually pretty good ground right here. So it's uh, the alfalfa is growing really well. I know alfalfa kind of struggles in some lighter, sandier soil, but it's doing pretty good here. And like I said, we got this baled without rain on it. It's really nice stuff. So I think the cows ought to like it. Um, I know the goats like it. We gave them a few armfuls and they've been eating on it all day. So probably a pretty quick video, not much to it, but I just kind of wanted to show the process, cut the hay, let it dry for a few days, rake it, bale it, pretty simple. This should be a pretty good hay field for at least five, six years. Usually the alfalfa kind of thins out over time and then you end up with kind of a, just a grass hay field. But eventually I want this to kind of be pasture. I'm thinking down the road we could get some cattle here, maybe put up a barn or something. So it should be good pasture down the road. Uh, there's a couple spots where we kind of missed mowing. I'm probably gonna have to take the mower out and just kind of cut those. That way the hay grows back nicely. Yeah, we'll get these hay bales picked up and that's gonna do it for this video. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing some vintage equipment, 1206, 4440 John Deere, all the good stuff. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.